welcome back to another episode of Excalibur CCG TV's Talking Comics. I'm Olivia. I'm Mark. That's Riggs. He's back. Hey there. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him, but he's there. He's there. He's mumbling and grumbling and yeah. whatnot. Um, we have locations and websites and a website. Yeah. I think one. A two, Facebook. Two Facebook. Two face. Sorry. Two Facebook. One, twi one yeah, Twitter? I guess. I'm not sure about that. But we also have emails and phone numbers. So Absolutely. check them out. Um, this is the show, as I'm sure you all know, where we talk about all the books that are hitting the shelves. So uh, this week is the ones, all the, the books for March 13. That's right. So, uh, let's talk about those. Okay. Um, let's do it. I'll start this week. All right. I'm getting crazy up in here. <laughs> Age of Conan, <laughs> Bellet, number one of five from Marvel. Um, Tinny, Teeny Howard, <laughs> and Kate Neemchick. I always like Tiny Howard. It just, yeah. sounds, <laughs> it just sounds funny to me. Bellet, in all caps. The name alone conjures up, conjures fear up and down the coasts of the Hyborian Age, and the sight of her ship, the Tigress, is an omen of despair for any town in the Pirate Queen's path. The Age of Conan kicks off with one of Conan's most formidable and memorable female compatriots in an all-new story revealing how she became the undisputed Queen of the Black Coast. The teenage- She won the belt. Yeah, she, she did it. Undisputed. The teenage Bellet, obsessed with the sea as well as the monsters and treasures she thinks are summoning her there, stows away on the ship of the dreaded Admiral Atrahasis. Into, Thank you, Admiral Agbor. Into a deadly adventure even she could not predict. Plus, the first chapter of an all new Bellet prose novella, presented here for the first time. The first time. So they're All sticking right. with putting those at the end. Yes, they are. Are there any more Conan books coming or series? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this Age of Conan might deal with um, like different characters from that. Yeah, because this one seems to be focusing more. On yeah. Bellet. I don't know if that's for this ep this issue. Like, or if it's, it's a different like, person every issue, or I, I think, don't know. Let's yeah, I out. think they're doing different story arcs. Maybe I don't know. I haven't seen anything about another one. But they said three when they first announced Conan, and this might be the third one. So we maybe it's like know. Age of Republic, Age maybe of Conan. It, is. it could and be. And so this one's Bellet, and then you'll have all the different people. Could be. I don't know any of the people. So. There's not a whole lot that that were. I mean, she was only in one story, like in the books. So I don't know. Um. All right. Well, also from Marvel, it's another Age of X Men. Singular. Yes. Um, miniseries. This is Apocalypse and the Extracts. Number one of five. Extracts. Extracts. Um, written by Tim Seeley and art by Salva Espen. X-Men, X-Man has created a utopia for mutants. We all know this. A utopia where no one knows love. Poor utopia. How can you have a utopia without love? Thankfully, a hero rises up to lead the rebellion against this way of life and teach the ways of family and romance. I mean, if you have a rebellion, it's not much of a utopia anymore. This is true. So. And he goes by the name in Saba Noor. That's, uh, join Apocalypse and his rebel extracts as they strive to teach the world love again. Peace, love, and Apocalypse. Yeah. Assassination number one. This is for mature readers, guys. From Image, with Kyle Starks and Erica Henderson. I know some Hendersons. Do you? Yep. You know Harry and the Hendersons? No. I don't know Erica. Okay. But she does art. So she drawers. She yeah. drawers stuff. The world's former greatest hitman hires the 20 best assassins in the world to be his bodyguards. These mean as hell hired guns and murderers must work together to keep the new crime boss safe while attempting to solve the mystery of who's trying to off him. With the same laugh until you cry spirit of action comedies like Hot Fuzz, Tropic Thunder, and Deadpool. 
<laughs> Assassination is the bombastic side splitting murder fest you've been waiting for. Okay. All right. Um, next up is from DC Comics. It's uh, Batman Who Laughs, The Grim Knight. It's a one shot. Gatman. Number yes. one Gat shot. Man, see? Gatman. Uh, or Gatnan. Gatnan. Uh, written by Scott Snyder and James Tinian the Fourth, and Tinianiv. Tinianiv, that's right. And art by Eduardo Risso, who is always awesome. Ripped from Batman's greatest nightmares, the Grim Knight is his world's most dangerous vigilante, unafraid to use any weapon to go to any lengths, and go to any lengths to stop those whom he deems worthy of death. Trained with the finest. Arsenal, Wayne Money Can Buy, learn the secret origin of the second deadliest Batman, hand selected by the Batman Who Laughs to bring his dark plans to fruition. It's a big one shot, 28 page story. Okay. DC's version of The Punisher. Yeah. Calamity Kate, number one from Dark Horse. Magdalene, Visagio, and Corin Howell. I know some Howells. Do you? I know. You know Henderson's and Howells. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you're going to interject, just come on screen. Because I can't hear you probably. That's right. <laughs> he's creeping out. No, he stopped. Okay. Kate Strand reboots her destructive life and comes to L.A. to be the superhero she always wanted to be, Calamity Kate. Gun-toting monster killer. With her latest career change, she faces new challenges, relationships, and competition. Colon. Desperate to show she's worth the damn in a world overrun by zombies, vampires, demons, goblins, and the ultimate monster bounty. What is it called when there's two dots? Dot, dot. Um, that's, isn't that a colon? Isn't the other one a semicolon? Oh! Oops. Oh, well. Colon. Okay. The, the real colon. The seven fabled beasts of yore. Okay. Um, from Albatross Funny Books. The Return of The mm. Goon. Number one. Written, arted by Eric Powell. Uh, the and next. cover arted. Yes, He's and cover arted. He this is doing it all. Story. That's right. His guy, the goon. The next era in the legacy of the goon starts here. This all new series marks the goon's return to Albatross Funny Books. I don't think he's ever been at Albatross I don't Funny. I think so. Yeah. Isn't Albatross kind of new? That's new. They started off with, uh, with uh, the hillbilly guy. Um, and it's just in time to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the book. Eric Powell takes the series to its humor based roots as Goon and Frankie return from strange adventures abroad to find a horde of unsavory characters have filled the void left in his absence from Lonely Street. So good stuff. The Goon's coming back. I like The Goon. That's a fun book. Eric Powell makes me laugh. With his writing and his arting. Yes, that's true. Little Bird, number one of five, for mature readers. That's what my mom called me when I was a baby. Not mature readers. Oh. <laughs> I, was gonna, little bird. I was gonna say, okay. okay. Little Bird. From Image, Darcy Van Huelgeest. I looked it up, that's how you say it, I think. And art by Ian Bertrand. With the same limitless scope as a new East of West or Saga, and the drama and surrealism of Akira, Little Bird follows a young resistance fighter who battles against an oppressive American empire and searches for her own identity in a world of fire. Uh -huh. um, Not a whole lot on that one. Well. Other than saying, hey, it's like these really good books. <laughs> well, or yeah. Or books that started out really good. That least. used to bug the dude that used to do this show, Randy. That used to bug him no end when they compared it to other stuff. I mean, if it is like those other stuff, then that's fine, but... We don't know yet. That's we'll true. See. That's true. It's, set, it's setting up some high expectations. It is. That, yeah, with East of West and Saga. Yeah, and Akira. Yeah. Yep. Akira didn't get uh, all caps like East of West and Saga did. Ah, uh, well, mm -hmm. it wasn't an image book, so I guess they were biased. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, anyway. Next up is uh, from Marvel Comics, a new number one for Miss Marvel. This is a the magnificent Miss Marvel from Saladin Ahmed. And Minkyu Young uh, on the art. It's 
Saladin Ahmed, he did the uh, Black Bolt. He did something else in between. All new yeah. ongoing series from Eisner Award winning writer Saladin Ahmed. But it's not business as usual in Jersey City. Aliens are wreaking havoc or wrecking havoc, as Chris Hunter would say, in Kamala's corner of the world. And they seem weirdly interested in Miss Marvel and her family. Mm. All right. So a new launch for Miss Marvel. She's also going to be the first team up in the new Marvel team up coming up soon. So big ups for Miss Marvel. Do you watch Riverdale? Well, you know that season three happened. So get ready for Riverdale season three, number one, from Archie Comic Publications, if you did not already get that. Um, writer Mikol Ostow and artists this is this is. Thomas Batilli and Joe Isma take a deeper dive into some of the skeletons buried in and around Riverdale, as well as hidden and unexpected connections to the farm and the game. Everyone is hiding something in this companion to the third season of the massive hit CW series, Riverdale. Alrighty. Luke Perry. Was he on Riverdale? Yeah. Was he? he played Archie's dad. Oh. Archie's dead? Dad? Yeah, Archie's dead. Oh. Still alive. <laughs> Luke Perry's up. not. I think we have to get somebody different. I found from that out yesterday. Did you? All right, Star Wars Age of Republic General Grievous number one from Marvel Comics, written by Jody Hauser and art by Luke Ross. I like Luke Ross, good artist. In his hunt to kill Jedi, Grievous stumbles across a power greater than he imagined. Uh, what secrets will the killer cyborg find inside a lost Jedi temple? They really like. They want to do all caps for everything, like every organization, but never the Jedi. <laughs> Nobody likes the Jedi. Can Grievous strike a blow against the very force capitalized itself? I don't know, we'll have to see. Well, well yeah. Buy the one shot and find out. Is that one a one shot? It is a one all shot. The all the yeah, yeah. See, and I thought I saw some issue two. And the most confusing thing is the AOR is going to stay and they're going to change it, to, but it's going to be Age of Rebellion pretty soon because they're going to have all the Han Solo and Jabba the Hutt and stuff like that coming out. So it's still going to be AOR, but a different era. Oh, so it, okay, just the art, the meaning of the R changes. Yes, yes. That's kind of confusing. Yes. A little confusing only if you use <laughs> the initials. What's that? Red alert. <laughs> okay, Riker. Okay, that was your that was your cameo. Okay, that was Will right <laughs> in his weird walk. Uncanny X Men Winter's End. Get it? Cause the winter is ending, yeah. but not. It's taken a while. Yeah, it has taken a while. Um, this, this is issue number one. I don't know if this is a one shot. Probably. I'm That's guessing it. yes. I was thinking so. This is Marvel. The. Cena Grace and Nathan Stockman, Iceman and the X-Men, okay. Iceman and the X-Men get a special visitor from the future. See, with X-Man, it's very... Yes. Yeah, there's a lot. An older Bobby Drake has come to the present to tell him to give up being a superhero. But what could have happened that would change Bobby Drake from the X-Men's resident jokester to a morose mutant? I don't know. Don't know. We'll have You'll have to too. read it to find out. Absolutely. So I did the last one. Why don't you tell us about a really old comic? Like okay. super old. Well, it's not super <laughs> like old. Like I wasn't even born yet super old. Well, you, you probably weren't age. born when this one, this one came out in the 80s. So you probably weren't. I was not born. So, but it's not super old. It's middle old. This is um, this is uh, Spider-Man, the death of Gene DeWolf. Um, collection, the whole story, and the later story that finishes it up later that they didn't finish before. Oops. This is uh, <laughs> seventy six. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that's when the, it started. That's when it started. Yeah, this is like issues one hundred seven through one hundred ten and one thirty four through one thirty six of the Spectacular Spider Man. This deals with the je death of Gene DeWolf. Um, obviously, who died like off panel, which was kind of. 
weird, but um, and this is Spider-Man and Daredevil trying to find out who caused her to be dead, and they find out. And spoiler, it's the Sin Eater. And um, well, there. Yeah, and uh, that's it's their story of tangling with the Sin Eater and each other, and then another story later on, which uh, deals with the death of the Sin Eater, which I guess kind of closes out the whole thing. But it's a cool story. It's Peter David writing and um, various artists. Various was still working way back then. Okay, so you want us to talk about stuff we care about. Well, there were four things that were good. <laughs> Speaking of number four, here's Conan the Barbarian, number four. It's all about him being old and like not liking being a king. He like throws up a bunch, don't worry. He pretty much did that his whole life anyway. I'm sure. Domino's Hot Shots. There's like a weird uh, meteorite kind of deal that lands in Antarctica. But who has control of Antarctica? No one. So who's going to get the art, the, the like artifact kind of thing? First come, first serve, I'm guessing. Well, the guy who got it was, who touched it, like almost died. Mm -hmm. And he's from... South Korea, and then the guy he was with was French. But now the Russians, the Wakandans, and Black Widow. I don't, I don't, who knows where she's, she's with. Um, they all want it. Uh huh. So. Or at least a person from those cities. And so Domino and um, Diamondback, and I can't remember the cowgirl's name right now. Um, they all want to get the artifact. Keep it from going to a certain country to have the possibility of like taking over the world or something. Uh, okay. So, that's her job. Astro Hustle! That one was good. It's got some cool covers and some cool art and stuff. He's the son of like a guy who was like, hey, you can't just have free labor and bad, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, O S O E O OSHA codes. Oh, okay. Okay. You have to have a work, a safe work, safe environment, work environment, and you have to pay for like people doing stuff for you. And so he's his son, and um, he was like, oh, my dad got into a lot of trouble, and people hate him, so now they hate me. But he's also a criminal anyway, so I mean, he didn't do anything to like help the situation. So there's this guy who wants to kill him. Here's his adventure. Meet the scrolls. What if the scrolls? Well, I'm, I guess this is more than a what if. This is otherwise if you what if the scrolls lived on Earth. The scrolls are living on Earth, but there's not a whole lot, and they make families. They get like breeded together by the government. <laughs> um, so then they have kids, and then the kids also also become like agents on their mission. And this family has the most important mission. But the daughter likes the humans because she was born on Earth. Or she grew up on Earth, at least. Sad face. But she is part of one of the most important missions, so what's she going to do? Mm. We'll find out. we have to find out. Mm -hmm. She likes to be a butterfly. Oh. She shape changes into a butterfly a couple times. Okay. And people bully her. Fun fact. I like all four of those. They were all good, and three of them were number ones. Okay. Well, very good. So there is stuff we like. Great show, guys. Great show. Now I know why tigers eat their young. <laughs> <laughs> there's just not stuff we like every week is the issue. Well, that's true. Because <clears throat> there's a lot of weeks. Last week was kind of a rough week. Yeah. I was... A lot of stuff was happening off screen. That wasn't good. So, anyway, that's it. That's the for show. This week. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that bell. Yes. Yes. Because we don't post super regular. Well, I mean, we post like once a week, but not at the same time or the same day. It's true. So hit that bell, and then you'll like get you'll a notification know. on yes. your phone or. I think you can set it up to be an email. I don't know. I don't either. But it's possible. 
And YouTube's subscription box sucks, so that also helps to make sure that that doesn't. Sometimes you still don't get the notification. I know that. But if you still watch them regularly enough, they'll make sure you get that notification. There Hit that go. bell! Yes. Ding, ding. And check us out in real life. Come to the store. Yeah. We Meat do rigs. Ship stuff. Meat rigs. <laughs> if you rigs. go to the Remember. one in Louisiana. Be a thinker, not a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye.